are the three principles that really have you become more effective. I always think in terms of positivity and it starts with yourself. Number two, you always have an option, choice. And now we're going to go to the third one, reflection. This is the only skill of everything I'm sharing with you that needs to be learned. And you can learn it. And in the resource guidebook, there are a number of questions which at your own convenience you can go through to show you how to ask reflective questions. But so many times we ask a question which is really a pothole question, such as, why are you doing that? And the response is, I don't know. And the kid really doesn't know. Can you, for example, articulate your motivation? And even if you wanted to, or even, pardon me, even if you could, would you want to? We do not know a person's assumption, a, a person's motivation. It's all guesswork. The idea behind the idea of reflection is to have the person reflect how what the person is doing, the motivation is affecting behavior. I'm interested in the behavior, not the motivation. And this is perhaps why I would never be a, a psychologist, because there's a big school of psychology that says you need to find the person's motivation in order to have the person improve or to have the person change behavior. Now, finding the reason may be interesting, but it has absolutely no effect on making new neural connections. As William Glasser has said, you don't need to find the pothole that ruined the alignment of the front end to have the front end aligned again. Let me give you a personal experience. When our daughter was about two and a half, and Hillary just has beautiful articulation. She, except for one word or one letter, the S. And so one day at dinner, I made the S the way it should sound. For the next two weeks, every time Hillary came to a sound of S, she stopped to make it perfect. And by the way, one of these chapters in the book, I talk about perfectionism. I'm going to go on a tangent just for a moment. And the idea is you cannot learn and be perfect at the same time. And you should tell, teach this to your kids. Excellent work, superior work, outstanding work. But we're getting too many kids, especially young girls, who get anorexia nervosa or bulimia because they feel they've got to be perfect to be liked. Perfection is something no human should ever strive for. Again, superior work, outstanding work, excellent work. But you cannot learn and be perfect at the same time. The only time you fail is when you don't get up. So coming back to Hillary, what I had done is I had taken something that is just natural, learning how to talk. Young people hesitate, they repeat. It's like thinking about walking down a set of stairs. If you walk down the stairs and you thought one leg in front of the other, you would trip because it's an automatic neurological pattern. Well, I interrupted this natural pattern for Hillary. I corrected her. So she wanted to make it perfect. Fortunately, I looked at my wife and she looked at me and I said, this is the very first start of someone stuttering. I never brought it up again. Evelyn never brought it up again. And Hillary has beautiful articulation. Here's my point. There are certain things in life that you do not want to bring attention to. And the other part is finding out why Hillary was making that a sound that was not as good as her other sounds had nothing to do with her changing the behavior pattern. So again, although I'm not a psychologist, I truly believe in William Glass's reality therapy, which is based on Promoting responsibility. Finding out what causes a person to do something is of interest, but has absolutely nothing to do with changing the neurology in your brain to making new synapses, to making the new system your default in order to change behavior.
I'm interested in behavior. I'm interested specifically on how kids learn and how kids behave. What's going on in their mind is really of no concern to me. I can change it anyway. And as I mentioned, they may not even be able to know the reason. The point is, how do you get people to improve and to change? And the answer is through learning the skill of asking reflective questions. If you're watching this with one other person, turn to that person. And if you're not, if you're watching by yourself, just say this out loud. Say the following. Yes, I'm sure you are right. One more time, please. Yes, I'm sure you are right. We're going to do it a third time. Yes, I'm sure you are right. Good. Now say those exact same words, but have them mean, no, I'm sure you're wrong. Even though you said, yes, I'm sure you're right. It means, yes, I'm sure you're right. Notice what I just did. It's not only the words I say, yes, I'm sure you're right, it's the tone that I use. So let me share with you something that I think brings the point home fairly well. It's called tone of voice. It's not only what you say, but the manner in which you say it. It's not only the language you use, but the tone in which you convey it. Come here, I sharply said, and the child cowed and wept. Come here, I said. He looked and smiled, and straight to my lap he crept. Words may be mild and fair, but the tone can pierce like a dart. Words may be soft as the summer air, but the tone can break my heart. Words come from the mind and grow by study and art, but tone leaps from the inner self, revealing the state of the heart. For if you want behavior to change, of this you must remain aware. As much as the word you use, it's the tone of your voice which communicates how much you care. It's not only the tone, it's the volume. Jason, and it's kinesics. Kinesics simply means communicating without words. This is communicating one thing. This is communicating something else. This is communicating one thing. This is communicating something else. So the very first thing you want to do when you're communicating with the youngster, especially the kid who in, in constantly is acting out, what you do is you gasp, take a deep gasp of voice, so you don't, do not become emotionally hijacked. And then you ask, Jason, reflect on the level you're choosing to act on. Notice what I'm doing. I'm, ta I'm talking with the kid in a non-threatening way. And oftentimes, I'll just be asking a question. Now, usually, when you're asking a question, you don't yell the question out. Just the asking by itself reduces stress. And again, be aware of kinesics, communication without saying anything, just by your actions yourself. We're always modeling for kids. We're always communicating with kids. But not only what we say, but how we say it, the volume of our voice and communication without words. How do others see you? After this session, take a break and look in the mirror. Put a smile on your face. See how your countenance brightens? It's amazing what a smile will do. The brain has mirror neurons. You witness this when you smile at an infant, and the infant smiles back. You see this when someone yawns, and you find yourself yawning too. The same holds true with a smile. The lyrics of this song ring true. Smile, and the world smiles with you. Cry, and you cry alone. Act on this phenomenon. Smile at, at one of your students and watch the face of the student brighten. Take a moment and make a notation and put it where you will be reminded to smile at and with your students. <laughs>